Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to find the least common multiple, the LCM, using two different strategies, listing out multiples and prime factorization. We will start with the strategy of listing out some multiples of each number in order to find the least common multiple, and then we'll move on to using prime factorization. Now, as far as the least common multiple between numbers, this is going to be the smallest multiple in value that both numbers share. Now, a multiple is the result of multiplying a given number by an integer. When we think of the multiples of a number, we need to think about the numbers we get when multiplying that given number by integers. A simpler way to think about multiples is to think about skip counting. So all of the numbers something is going to hit when you count up by that number. Those are all going to be multiples. This will make a lot more sense as we go through our examples. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number 1, where we have 9 and 12. We're going to start by listing some multiples of both 9 and 12. Then we will look for common multiples, and specifically the least common multiple, also referred to as the LCM. Let's start with some multiples of 9, which are 9 times 1, which is 9, 9 times 2, is 18, 9 times 3 is 27, 9 times 4 is 36, and 9 times 5 is 45. So you can see that we just skip counted by 9 to list those multiples. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, so on and so forth. Now I stopped at 45, because multiples go on forever, they are endless, they are infinite. My suggestion is to list four or five multiples when looking for the least common multiple. So list four or five multiples for each number, look for any in common, and if you don't have any in common, you can always extend the multiples lists. Now let's list the first five multiples of 12. 12 times one is 12. 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, 12 times 4 is 48, and 12 times 5 is 60. So again, you can see that we skip counted there. We skip counted by 12. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, so on and so forth. Now that we have some multiples listed for both 9 and 12, we need to look for any common multiples, so any multiples that they share. And then specifically, we need to look for the least common multiple. Well, 36 is a common multiple, and it's going to be the least common multiple, so the smallest multiple in value that they share. So let's write that the LCM which stands for least common multiple, is 36. So the least common multiple of 9 and 12 is 36. Now one thing I do want to mention about common multiples is that they are infinite. Although we only have one common multiple in our lists as is, 36, we can always extend multiples lists, so we can always keep going to find more common multiples. Remember, multiples are endless, so that means common multiples are endless. So that's just something to think about when it comes to multiples. Let's move on to number 2, where we have 10 and 25. Let's start with some multiples of 10. So 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 times 3 is 30, 10 times 4 is 40, and then 10 times 5 is 50. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on and so forth. Now let's list the first five multiples of 25. So 25 times 1 is 25, 25 times 2 is 50, 25 times 3 is 75, 25 times 4 is 100, and then 25 times 5 
is 125. Now that we have some multiples listed, we can look for common multiples, and specifically the least common multiple. Well, 50 is a common multiple, and it happens to be the least common multiple. So the LCM is 50. The least common multiple of 10 and 25 is 50. So there's how we list out some multiples of the numbers in order to find the least common multiple. Let's move on to using prime factorization. Here are our examples for using prime factorization. Now I like using this strategy and find it helpful when working with numbers that are a little larger in value and not as simple to work with. For example, the strategy of listing out multiples of numbers in order to find the LCM can be kind of difficult and time consuming when working with larger numbers in value. So this is a different approach, a different strategy to be familiar with when it comes to finding the least common multiple. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have 15 and 27. Let's start with the prime factorization of 15, and we will start with the factors of 3 and 5. Now 3 is prime, so we are done there, and 5 is prime, so we are done there as well. And that's the prime factorization of 15. We can't break that down any further. Now we have the prime factorization of 27. Let's start with the factors of 3 and 9. 3 times 9 equals 27. So 3 and 9 are factors of 27. 3 is prime, so we are done there, but we can break 9 down. 3 times 3 equals 9. So 3 is a factor of 9. 3 is prime, so we are done there and there. And that's the prime factorization of 27. We can't break that down any further. Now we're ready to move to the next step. So we need to list the prime factors of 15 and 27 and match them vertically. Let's see what this looks like, starting with 15. So our prime factors from the prime factorization are 3 and 5, or 3 times 5. Now for 27. So we have 3 times 3 times 3. And you'll notice that big gap underneath the 5 there. We are matching numbers vertically. 27 does not have a prime factor of 5. So I left that blank underneath the 5. Now that we have our prime factors listed and matched vertically, we move on to the next step where we bring down. And I like to draw a line underneath here in order to separate these steps. So this is a column. And although we have two threes here, this is a column of threes. So we just bring one down. We have a three to represent that column of two threes times, we have a column of 5 here, times, we have a 3 here, times another 3 here. So we end up with 3 times 5 times 3 times 3. And by multiplying these, we get our least common multiple. So 3 times 5 is 15, times 3 is 45, times 3 is 135, and that's our least common multiple. So the LCM, the least common multiple of 15 and 27, is 135. Let's move on to number two, where we have 28 and 52. Let's start with the prime factorization of 28. Now two, times 14 equals 28, so let's start with those factors. 2 is prime, so we are done there. 14 we can break down. 2 times 7 equals 14, so 2 and 7 are factors of 14. 
two is prime, so we are done there. And seven is prime as well, so we are done there. And that's the prime factorization of 28. We can't break that down any further. Now we need the prime factorization of 52. Let's start with the factors of two and 26. Two times 26 equals 52. So two and 26 are factors of 52. Two is prime, so we are done there. 26, we can break that down. 2 times 13 equals 26. So 2 and 13 are factors of 26. 2 is prime, so we are done there. And 13 is prime as well, so we are done there. And that's the prime factorization of 52. We can't break that down any further. Now we need to list the prime factors and match them vertically. For 28, we have 2 times 2 times 7. For 52, we have 2 times 2 times 13. Now we need to bring down. So we have a column of 2's here. So let's bring down a 2 to represent that column times another column of 2's. So let's bring another two down times seven times 13. So we have two times two times seven times 13 to get our least common multiple. We have two times two, which is four times seven is 28 times 13. Well, I'm not sure what 28 times 13 is, so let's come to the side here and multiply. 28 times 13. We will start with 3 times 8, which is 24. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. We are done here and done here. We need a 0. Now we have 1 times 8 which is eight, and then one times two is two. Let's add, four plus zero is four, eight plus eight is 16, and then one plus two is three. So we get 364. So the least common multiple of 28 and 52, let me squeeze this in here, is 360. Four. So there you have it. There's how to find the least common multiple, the LCM, using two different strategies, listing out multiples and using prime factorization. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.